For the last 15 years, if you wanted to change one element in an array to another element, the code looks something like this. Pretty straightforward. But if you wanted to do it immutably without actually modifying the array, the code looked like this. That's a huge mess for something that used to be so simple, which is why I'm so glad that JavaScript has added four new array methods that allow you to take this really ugly immutable code and change it to something like this. One single line. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. In this video, I really want to talk about the idea of immutability and the new array methods that deal with immutability really well. So if you've ever programmed in React before, you're very familiar with the idea of immutability, which essentially means that you cannot change something. So if I take my people array here and I say people of two is equal to new, and then I just console.log out my people array, You'll notice that that third element with the index of two has been replaced with the element of new. So I have mutated my array by changing it. Essentially, when you change something, you are mutating it. So I'm changing my people array. The idea behind immutability means that you don't actually change the array you're working on, and instead you're returning a new array with those elements. One of the easiest ways to do this with anything at all is just to create a copy. So we can say people copy is equal to, and we wanna create a copy of this array, the easiest way to do that is just to use the spread operator, and this will create a brand new copy. Now what I can do is I can say that the second indexed element of people copy is going to be new, and now when I save, you'll notice my original people array, this one right here, has not been changed, so we'll just mark this as original, just so we know the difference between them. There we go, you can see the original one has not been changed, but my new copy here has been changed. If I log that out, you can see that the people copy has that second index element changed to new, while the original copy does not have that changed. So if you want to be able to modify something and return a new array without actually mutating it, one of the easiest things you can do is to create a copy like this. Now the one downside of doing this is it requires you to manually make this copy up front, and then if you also wanted to go ahead and do some looping through an array, for example, it's actually going to be less performant because you need to first make a copy here which requires you to loop through the entire array, and then you would need to loop through the array a second time, and that's obviously not ideal. So instead, you'd like to do all of those at once. In the case of assigning a new index like this, the performance impact is essentially negligible, but if you were doing a big array and you were looping over a bunch of times, this could be a performance concern to worry about. So this is why JavaScript has added four new array methods that allow you to do things you normally could do by creating a copy and then manually doing it like this, but allows you to do it in one step with easier to write code. So for example, in this case, the immutable version of this is the with method. So if we get rid of this code here, I'm gonna get rid of this as well. And instead, I'm just gonna say people.with, and I'm gonna say with at index two, and I'm gonna replace it with the text of new here. So you're gonna notice if I just save this real quick that my original array has not been changed. But with essentially does the exact same thing as setting an element with a specific index. But the key here is it returns a new array. So we'll say this is gonna be our new people is equal to that. So let's just log out our new version. So we have our new people like that. And now if I save, you notice the new version has the second index updated to that new value, while the original value has not been changed. So this is just an easier way to break that down into one step, which is really nice when you're working in something like React. Now in this specific scenario, it doesn't really save you that much code, as the other way is essentially the same amount of code, and the performance concerns don't really make that much of a difference when you're using this with method. But with the other three methods we're gonna talk about in this video, the actual code you're saving can be quite significant, and best of all is it does help slightly with performance. So let's look at that right now. We're gonna look at the sort method. So normally, we have a sort method here, and if I just log out the value of this, we're gonna call people.sort. And if we just log that out, you can see it orders my people by their actual name. So you can see John comes first and Sally comes last because that is the alphabetical order. But you'll notice it modifies my original array. That's how sort works, is it changes the actual array that it works on. So if you wanted to make sure that you did this right, you would have to first create a copy of the people array like this and then sort it. And then you would need to return this as like a people copy, or we'll just say sorted people, just like that. And now we can log out our sorted people. And there you go, you can see that this sorted array has been changed, but our original array is left intact because we created a copy first before we did our sort. Pretty straightforward stuff. With the new JavaScript methods, we can get rid of this copy step right here, and instead we can just call to sorted. And what that's going to do is it's going to sort it without actually modifying the original array. So if we save, you can see our sorted version is sorted, while our original version is completely unchanged. 
And the reason that this is really useful is not only because it saves you a little bit of headache of coding, but also it saves you on performance. Because if we go back to the old way where we did this, first of all, to create a copy of the array, we had to loop through the entire array. And then to sort the array, we again had to loop through the entire array. So we looped through this array twice, which is not ideal. Normally, we'd only want to do it once. If we go back here to what we had here with two sorted, you'll notice we only have to loop through the array one time because what happens is as we're sorting the array, JavaScript is creating the new array for us at the exact same time. So we only actually loop through our array one time and our code is easier to write and read. So not only is our code better to understand, but it's also more performance slightly. Another method that really does almost the exact same thing is going to be reverse versus two reversed. The two reversed is going to be exactly the same as reverse, but it's going to give you a reversed copy instead of actually modifying the original. So if we just say reversed like that, and I give it a save, if I could spell properly, there we go. You can see that this array has been reversed in its order and this original array has been untouched. So again, it does the exact same thing as sort versus two sorted, but this is for reversing. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about is going to be the splice method and the two spliced method kind of the exact same thing. Splice allows you to essentially delete certain amounts of elements, add in new elements. It gives you a lot of possibilities, but essentially you give it a start number and then how many things that you want to delete as well as an optional thing you want to add. So let's say that we want to come in here and we want to delete everything, the first two elements. So we'll say delete two elements starting at the very first one. And then I'm going to add in a new element that just says new. And I'm just going to call that just like this. Give it a quick save. You can see it has deleted the first two elements and it has replaced them with the element of new. That's kind of how the splice works, but it has modified my original array, which is something you don't like. Instead, we can use to spliced, and what that's going to do is the exact same thing, but it's going to give me a copy back. So here we're going to have a copy that it returns to us, so you can see the copy has that modification, while the original is completely untouched, which is great. I'm just really glad that JavaScript is adding in these methods because there was lots of ways to do things while mutating an array, and there were some alternatives that were immutable, but there wasn't a full list of alternatives for everything, so this just makes it so that almost every single array method out there has a mutation version and an immutable version, which is really nice. The only downside to these methods, though, is that they aren't quite available in all browsers yet. Here I just really quickly pulled up the page for the with method, but all the other methods I talked about in this video had the exact same usage across everything. And you can see that Chrome, Edge, Safari, all those browsers have this, but Firefox is the one browser that doesn't support these methods yet. Also, it's relatively new if we click on usage here, and I just scroll down, you'll notice that there are some versions of Chrome, for example, and there are some versions here of Safari and some versions over here that don't quite have support for this yet, and that's because it dropped around the February time period, so it's been only a couple months at the time of releasing this video, but hopefully within a few months, maybe five, six months, this will be available widely enough across all browsers that you can use it inside of your actual code without having to use something like Babel to transpile it for you. And that's all there is to these four new array methods. Now, if you want to learn even more array methods, I have a full video on the eight best array methods. It's going to be linked right over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.